So thank you so much for joining us today. Sergio Rossini, I am just thrilled and actually honored to have you present to us on this issue of uh, wireless radiation and how it is absorbed into the body. Sergio is an electrical engineer and professor and he makes the invisible visible. So his work uh, with an electrical engineering teams in Brazil have documented how our bodies, our brains, our chests, our the tissues in our bodies absorb wireless radiation from laptops and uh, wireless antennas. In 2015, and we have this on the Environmental Health Trust website, um, he collaborated on a presentation showing the absorption of wireless radiation from a laptop dependent on the way the laptop was positioned against the body. So he is going to talk about his work. I'm so thankful that we're gonna be able to ask questions and also to have a chance to understand how you do the work you do and you know the technical work that goes into these images is just astounding. So thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. This is Renato, it's a pleasure. So uh, yeah, today I would like to, to present the highlights of part of my research while I was studying my master's. This presentation will cover the results of some computer simulations to assess the dosimetry associated to the use of laptops near to the body. I would like before I start the presentation, like uh, to ask everyone in the webinar to look around yourselves and quantify how many wireless devices you know that are around you. This is something that we may take into consideration, you know, or during our life, because we are so focused sometimes in our daily duties, you know, like to be uh, to take care of our children, wife, husband, uh, the duties of you know our home, etc. But we don't take a look sometimes, you know, around those wireless devices. And those wireless devices are constantly irradiating our bodies 24 by seven. And this represents for sure a uh, danger for our lives and for our loved ones. So yeah, please, please take a look at, you know, around, you know, around you and count how many wireless devices that are around you at home. And the research, uh, the specific absorption rate known as SAR or SAR is estimated from an agile body when interacting with a laptop. For this, I simulated several scenarios in order to position the laptop at different distances from the body. So we could analyze the variations of the SAR. Then these results are compared to the recommended exposure limits. I'm going to further explain the concepts of SAR during the presentation. I'll start uh, to talk about uh, a bit about Wi-Fi as a growing technology. It's not a secret for us that wireless technologies have had a dramatic increase in rate, especially during the 20th century. Among those technologies, we have Wi-Fi, which uh, is one of the most broadcasted once virtually included in every smart device sold currently. According to Statista, it is estimated that in 2021, more than 22 billion devices will be connected over Wi-Fi. This is a huge number and growing. So what about the concerns? Um, there, are, there are several factors that lead to valid concerns from the population. Currently, we are exposed to several sources of electromagnetic radiation. When those exposure limits were published by the Federal Commun Communications Commission or FCC, they were designed based on the specific scenarios. That is as the assumption of one source of radiation directed to the human body. In the 21st century, we're not exposed to one Wi-Fi transmitter antenna one typical a school classroom might have dozens of radiation streams coming from dozens of transmitting antennas. For example, 30 laptops, 30 cell phones, a wireless printer, a wireless security system, an overhead internet access point, and why not 
a cell tower located in line of sight outside of the window. In addition, the FCC radiation standards are based on the thermal heating principle, but now 30 years later, this is out of date and inapplicable today. Why? Since the heating is not the only issue here, there are studies showing a negative impact on human health, like headaches, sperm damage, and several types of cancer associated to electromagnetic radiation where there was no temperature change identified. And this is very important to, to note. So what about the specific absorption rate? So the SAR is an estimation of the power absorbed per unit of mass of the exposed tissue. The SAR is measured in watts per kilogram or milliwatts per gram. And it is widely used to quantify the electromagnetic field absorbed in biological issues. Okay, so on this slide, we can see the exposure limits issued by different organizations, including the max SAR limit allowed for the head or the entire body. The limit recommended by the FCC, for instance, is 1.6 watts per kilogram averaged over one gram of tissue. That is taken over the volume containing a mass of one gram of tissue that is absorbing the most signal. In addition, there are, there are situations where the calculations were taken from 10 grams of, of tissue. So we have the FCC, the IEEE, and the ECNIRP from Europe. Uh, now I'm gonna talk about the, the short and long exposure time effects. I'll start with the short exposure time effects known also as thermals. These are the most diffused during the last decades and the most widespread international standards are based solely on these effects. Thermal effects are those caused by the direct heating of the tissue because of the absorption of electromagnetic energy in a dissipative medium. On the other side, we have the non-thermal exposure effects known also as, uh, as long term of exposure. These are currently one of the axes of the research. Knowledge about these effects uh, is uh, insufficient. Wireless personal access networks and wireless local area networks are examples of environments in which you can find any number of devices, such laptops, cell phones, smart devices, Bluetooth devices, wireless routers, etc., close to the body, radiating constantly for prolonged times during several days a week. This is part of the virtual population, Duke, Billy, and Thelonius. These are high resolution heterogeneous anatomical models created from magnetic, mag magnetic uh, resonance image data of volunteers. It can be uh, varied the postures of those models to fulfill different scenarios. Since the virtual population inception, these models have uh, become the gold standard for biophysical modeling applications. This was the very first time we had the chance to use models like this to assess a SAR in the laboratory of the university. When I was studying my masters, there was a partnership between the university and the software provider. So we were given Duke to perform the simulations. On your left, uh, Duke is an adult, uh, 34 years old. A number of tissues 77 with a 75 bones with a weight of 72.4 kilograms and height of 1.77 meters. We have Billy and Thelonius as well. So one key step to achieve consistent results from the simulation is the characterization of the dielectric properties of the tissues. Basically, the dielectric properties like the relative permittivity and the electrical conductivity relate to the storage and dissipation of electric and magnetic energy in materials. 
These values vary depending on several factors, like the frequency being irradiated. In this case, 2.4 gigahertz. This is the laptop model I used for the simulations and the locations I used to position the antenna inside of the laptop computer. The first position is in the right rear part of the screen, and the second one is on the right rear part of the keyboard. The power delivered to the radiating element or antenna was set to 100 milliwatts. This is the, the power normally found on devices like this. On this slide, we can, we can see Duke in different positions while interacting with the laptop. The laptop then is moved vertically for each position, starting from the lap with the radiating element located behind the, the keyboard. I set the vertical distances based on the common office tables. The distances are in centimeters. Similar to the previous slide, we can see Duke in three different positions while interacting with the laptop. Now the laptop is moved horizontally in three positions, starting from the chest with the radiating element located behind the screen. The idea with these two scenarios was to simulate some common situations when interacting with laptops. Again, the distances are set in centimeters. Uh, the SARS is simulated using SEMCAT X. This is a software. Uh, uh, this software performs the finite difference time domain or FDDD method, which allows a calculation of electromagnetic exposure due to Wi Fi devices. The FDDD method has proved to be one of the most efficient techniques to estimate a radio frequency absorption in the electric tissues, especially when heterogeneous models are involved. The SAR simulations were performed in the computational cluster of the university and in a computer powered with a specific hardware at the communications laboratory. Some simulations took days to complete due to the complex mathematical calculations involved in the processes. So now we'll start uh, with uh, some of the results uh, from this research. On this slide, we can see the SOAR distribution on Duke's body when varying the elevation of the laptop. The yellow areas like hands and lap are the most irradiated, whilst the blue purple are the less irradiated ones. Uh, on this table, we can see the values of SAR for these three positions formally shown. The values obtained from the simulations were below the recommended exposure limits. Nonetheless, the SAR value identified in the initial position was close to the limit allowed by the FCC. Similar to previous slide, this is the sort of distribution on Duke's body when changing the horizontal distance from the laptop. Uh, yellow areas like hands and chest are the most irradiated, absorbing the higher electromagnetic energy, whilst the blue purple ones are the less irradiated ones. On this table, we can see the values of SAR for the three positions formally shown, uh, the SAR values obtained from these simulations were below the recommended exposure limits. Now I'll start uh, on the conclusion side of the research. It can be seen from the simulations that the SAR values are below the exposure limits. Nonetheless, it is very important to remark that those recommendations and standards usually adopted in different countries, only consider the health effects of short time exposure. However, portable devices like cell phones or laptops may be used for long time close to the user's body. Therefore, the standards must consider the user's health risks due to the, due to the low level of long time exposure. In addition, new antennas could be suggested in order to reduce the user's electromagnetic absorption.
And actually, this was this was one of the main contributions of my research. The, the findings that the current exposure limits relate only to short and time exposure and not to the long time exposure effects. Because when those uh, standards were created, Wi-Fi didn't exist and also Bluetooth and technologies like, uh, like this. So this is very important to remark. Uh, as an appendix, I would like to share with you all some additional studies I conducted. Um, I performed the SART analysis with uh, heterogeneous heads uh, when exposed to mobile cell phone placed close to the ear, radiating at Wi-Fi frequency, uh, in this case, 2.4 gigahertz. SART levels registered from the 8-year-old model were up to 14% higher than the 34-year-old model. So you'll see below the two models that I used with the cell phone is placed next to the ear of each model. An additional study that I conducted uh, is the, the one I called uh, transparent walls, uh, where it was possible to minimize internal electromagnetic reflections in a controlled environment, improving the transmission of electromagnetic waves through the walls. Uh, unwanted electromagnetic reflections have resulted in the following problems. For example, unnecessarily increase the, the exposure to electromagnetic fields and energy absorbed by the body. And of course, this will lead to uncovered areas or dead spots. And the solution in quotation will be to install more wireless infrastructure. Uh, additional studies to be conducted um, is the SART analysis, including an heterogeneous model of a pregnant woman and the SART analysis of a full classroom comprised of children and the respective typical wireless infrastructure that is wireless routers, printers, laptops, mobile cell phones, et cetera. I really appreciate you coming on uh, at Environmental Health Trust. We showcase this research in our talks and often only have one or two minutes on each image. And you've explained how it's created by computer simulations. I wanted to point out a few things that it came up in your research, which is that children's tissues are more conductive to a wireless radiation. It is known that for mammals, that the dielectric constant in their tissues is different than for, for adults. And that is one of the reasons why the wireless radiation penetrates proportionately more and, and deeper into their bodies. They also are smaller. They have smaller mm -hmm. arms. They have littler ears. So it, devices are held closer as well to the body and to their brain. And they also have, and I, I know that, you know, this, this is, we're talking about SAR, which you've explained. It is not it does not mean safety because it is a measurement that is not related, as you said, to long-term exposure to all of these, these non-thermal effects. But it is useful to explain this to people so they can understand that it is going into our bodies. Yeah. That, that is what is happening here. And children have developing brains that are more vulnerable to neurotoxic effects. They have more active stem cells in their body. And those have been shown to be more sensitive to wireless radiation. And uh, they, they're gonna be using devices for longer than adults because they're having a lifetime of exposure. You talked about pregnancy and, you know, I have not seen, there, there's not been enough research to look at all the different stages of pregnancy. I know there's been some that we've shared, but women now are, they're putting the laptop on their abdomen. Do, do have you done any research on that at all with the laptop on the the belly? No, so far no. But I wish, you know, it's it's it for sure. This will be a a hit, you know, because it's like a, I see, you know, some pregnant women, you know, interacting with wireless technology near to the belly, uh, where the fetus is like uh, developing, you know. And as he said, as, as you said, Mrs. Scorato, those standard exposure limits um, were created when nothing of this existed right. and under different conditions. So this is something that we have to take in mind. Right, right, right. 
it's um it, everything's happened so fast in the last yeah. two and a half decades um well so i have some questions from the audience could you unshare your screen so people can see you better and sure. um that would be great so someone asked how close was the distance um to the lap when the laptop was positioned on the thighs uh, on the on the on the lap um that is a good question uh it it, it was like uh millimeters you know mm -hmm. it was like a, a couple of millimeters like a, i was too when i was positioning the laptop on the lap of the model i had to be very careful you know with the in controlling the distances in the software so the idea was to be as much realistic as I could on that mm -hmm. time when I was modeling the, the the different scenarios. But yeah, yeah, I was like a, a one two millimeters, the you know, the maximum, you know, the distance. Is the so when you did this, you weren't using an actual posable body. This was a computer simulation that you technically, am I correct? You technically put the laptop in place in a computer model actually it was a it was a model it's like a, an additional how can i say a package of the software mm -hmm. that the software provider like uh, gave us back on you know 2014 mm -hmm. and i imported this model this is a 3d model with a, a, a heterogeneous model where you can play with the different positions and I, yeah, what I created by myself was the radiating element, you know, the antenna, and also oh. the laptop model. Yeah. And and where you, where the antenna was placed is important. So I have two questions for you yeah, about sure. how the antennas are placed on the laptops. And then my second question is, in a laptop, how many antennas are on a real laptop, like the yeah, kind you get at the question. store? Because don't we have more than one antenna? Sure, absolutely. Uh, the position on antenna was based on uh, previous investigations, previous research. Uh, I found in several books when it was like performing the research. And I found two typical positions next to the keyboard and next, you know, the, the rear part of the screen. Back on that time, perhaps some of those positions may have changed with the time now. And with the other comment you said is, yeah, you're right, absolutely right. There are like uh, a Bluetooth antennas, Wi-Fi antennas, of course. Um, like uh, those are the two most uh, common technologies found in computers right now, besides, you know, the proprietary technologies. Like oh. for example, some, some, how can I say, manufacturers, they can include a proprietary technology as well. Why not? You mean technology that that is secret? Is that what you mean? No, it's like, a, for example, own technology, like a, to connect a, like, a, for example, I don't know if I can say this here, like a, Apple, like it may have like a, they, they are own technology, they own like an ecosystem where they can connect only devices produced by them. It's not commercial technology, you know what I mean? So, so it's but, like, I see. Yeah, basically, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are the most broadcast technologies uh, found in, in laptops. And now there soon will be 5G and everything. They even have cellular in some in some laptops. I'm thinking about the, the kids in school, how they sit like a whole bunch of them, and then they have all the laptops on their lap. So they have it from the back, the sides. Have the position, ever... yeah, that's a good point. That may depend on the the manufacturer, you know. You know, if the the I know that when I was looking for the uh, realistic position of the radiating element, um, I wanted to 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 look, you know, for something uh, from the commercial perspective. And when I went to the to the books existing, you know, available on that time, I found these two typical positions mm -hmm. for the laptop. But yeah, something that you have, you're absolutely right, is like uh, we are not only a, 
we don't only see we don't we don't only see Wi-Fi on laptops. You know, we have you know more you know other additional technologies, wireless technologies. Yeah, we're inundated. So I have a question about what what are you hoping to do further in your research? What do you want people or companies or schools to take away to learn from your work? And um, you know, what do you want to do with this research and continue it? Perfect. Good question. Thanks for asking. First of all, raise awareness. You know, around this topic. This is a very important topic. And as you said during the presentation, wireless technologies have had a dramatic, you know, increase, increasing rate during the last uh, couple of decades. Uh, so the idea yeah, is to raise awareness among the population to let people know that this is not a um, this is not a game this is a uh, this is for real uh and the collateral effects we can get in the future uh the the the, the effects in health we can get from uh, the wireless technologies uh, can be only seen in 20 30 years from now so we have to be very careful with that and also to disconnect or disable when possible, you know, the wireless technology. If you don't need it, go for wired, you know, technology. It's not like, uh, I know that sometimes may be easier depending on the location or scenario, but if you don't have to, to keep these technologies like uh, on, you may go and simply disable this kind of technology, you know to decrease the unnecessary radiation your body is getting from the technology. Someone asked, I will have a couple questions on uh, two different places here, but could you talk a little bit about your, your training and the, your research leading up to the point where you started working on uh, the specific absorption rates? I am an electronic engineer and I focused, you know, my background, my academic background in wireless technologies. Then uh, when I applied to the masters, I applied you know, um, to specialize my knowledge in wireless technologies. And the, all the knowledge gathered you know, from the different subjects you know, during the masters uh, supported me to better, to better understand the, the theoretical concepts of a SAR and the FDTD method, you know, that I just mentioned. And on the other side, uh, about the training with the, about the, comp the, the software, I, I was lucky that when I was studying the university, we had a point of contact on the software provider side who was uh, actively helping me with their research uh, when it comes to the, the software manipulation, because it's, it's, it as is, as this software is proprietary, that there are in plenty information you can find in Google. So yeah, I, I I only had to focus only on the manual, the technical manual, and learn you know from the scratch of these concepts. But as I said, it was I, I was like lucky to have this person next to me actively helping me, you know, with the different concepts around the the software. So. Um... And just for, for people who are new on the call or who came in midway, the SAR is not, you know, having it meet it, uh, the limits, the FCC or the ICNRP limits does not equate with safety. Because as we document in our, uh, our lawsuit and also as has been documented, um, you know, we, we showcase the science that has shown effects at much, much lower levels. Um, than, than the SAR, but that is, the SAR is what is used by uh, governments and it's the, the, the measurement that is used. Now, the, the, um, the sophisticated technique that you're using um, is not necessarily used with compliance for devices even. It's more sophisticated than what companies use when they bring it on the market. Yeah. And something that you did is test in real world positions. Mm -hmm. positions how you use devices, but actually devices are not tested the way we even use them. They're not tested in, um, in, in body contact positions, like phones are not tested touching your body in your, yeah. on your chest or in your pocket. Um, and I've seen people with laptops, like if you got three kids or four kids in a room, 
You got one with the laptop on the body. Then you got on each side and their heads are like right on, like, you know, peering around the corner of the laptop. Mm -hmm. That's a situation that no go governments don't test for when they, before laptops come on the market, but that radiation is going into the body. Yeah, I, I got your point. And it's, it's not because of the FCC or the IEEE issued those uh, safety standards mean that uh, that's right or that's, you know, that's good for your health. That, it, that is not even a measure of safety for our lives. Because as I said, those standards are, are out of date, you know, today. And the principles they, they based on are inapplicable today. Now, I know that your colleagues have worked on iPads and exposures to the brain. Could you talk a little bit about that work and what you know about work? And also with your work where you had the laptop, there is exposures that go into the, the brain, the eyes, especially yeah. depending on where the device yeah, is. That, would, that equates with the intensity. Can you talk about that work? Sure, yeah. I, I had a colleague in the laboratory who was like a researching about, you know, the, la the in, in, in interaction, you know, between the lab, the, the, the lab, the, the iPad and the, in a heterogeneous hat uh, of adults. And I think about, you know, and children. And the, even the results uh, were similar to mine where the exposure, you know, the SAR uh, uh, evaluation, you know, the SAR levels uh, didn't like uh, exceed, you know, the, recommendations, you know, the exposure recommendation limits in in any case, that means that uh, we're safe. Because as you said, you know, it's not a measure of safety. Mm, and that was a very good, you know, and broadcasted uh, article, you know, paper. Uh, you can find it on IEEE uh, database as well. Uh, her name is Juliana. Yeah, I don't have the details of the of that investigation because it was like a couple of years later. But yeah, I, I I'm aware of that. There was research that we have. Um, I'm just clicking on it so I can pull it up, and my computer is going slow. Uh, by um, by oh Juliana uh, Ferreria and and Alvaro. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Ferreira, yeah. Yes, and that was showing the iPad in different positions mm -hmm. to the head. So I'll, um, I'll put a link to that in our next question when I have a minute for people on the chat so they can see it. And I'll, I'll put an image up on the screen where they simulated the exposure into the, into the eyes and into the body, the, the face yeah. at different distances from the body doing similar work with the similar uh, imaging that, that you're doing. I have another um, question. Did you measure the SAR in the eyes? And have you done those kinds of measurements? And the eyes don't have a way to dissipate heat. Yeah, no. good point. No, for, for, the, for the Duke's uh, research, I didn't uh, specifically, specifically focused on the eyes. Um, since I was like a more interested in like um, on that time, you know, and trying to simulate like a, a normal, you know, situation or scenario when people, you know, are exposed or interacting to laptops. But that's a good point. Um, one of the things that, you know, I know that the, the models you use, they're always being upgraded. They're, they're highly technical, they are very sophisticated, and then they'll, they'll come out just like we have new cars, there'll be a new model and it'll have different tissues, more tissues, because each of the tissues that you, uh, you, you simulate the absorption of the, the frequent, the, um, the wireless into the different tissues based on the rate that the, the wireless radiation is deposited into the tissue. And all of our tissues have different rates that that moves through, like your skull is different. Bone has a different uh, way that the electricity moves through, right? The skin, the each part has is different. That's what, can you talk about the different tissues and how wireless uh, interacts 
or does it ever stop from a certain kind of tissue or does it just different different rates through each one? Okay, so it depends on the, the tissue and it depends on the age uh, from a perspective. Uh, so yeah, so the more water the tissue has, the more dissipation it will get. Uh, this is why I was talking about the Mrs. Escarato was saying in the beginning that the, the desert is higher in children than adults because children, they have a more liquid in, on the tissues. And this means that the tissues are, are not fully developed uh, as adults. In adults, you don't have, uh, you don't find this kind of liquid in, in, the, in the tissues in the, in the same quantity as children. And yeah, it depends on the, of course, it depends on several factors, uh, the age, the tissue, the, um, the frequency of operations, the power you, 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 you deliver to the radiating, radiating element or the antenna. In this case, it depends on several factors as well. And the position, of course, of the antenna or their uh, wireless uh, device you are interacting with. One of the um, uh, one of our listeners is asking a question about how to encourage companies to expand their ways for creating safer technology. What what do you what ideas do you have about how technology can be made safer? With a difference between there's reducing exposure and then there's more safety related to uh, eliminating sources. But can you talk about what you know about? maybe what companies are doing or what you recommend for companies to do? Good point. I'm not fully aware of what, you know, what technology, you know, these kind of companies are doing to reduce or to create a safer technology for human beings. But uh, when I was studying my master's, uh, what came to, to the table back on that time was to create, and this was on one of the conclusions, uh, to create, uh, to design, perhaps antennas radiating opposite to the human body, you know, in order to decrease the, the absorption of the electromagnetic radiation uh, without uh, sacrificing or, how can I say, or decreasing the quality in the, uh, of the signal, you know, the communication between the receiver and the transmitter. Mm, but right now, I don't know if, you know, there are companies thinking on us, you know, on our safety. This is a good point. And I think there are not, there might be. We based on the facts. We need to, that's what we're hoping to, we're always doing is promoting uh -huh. and supporting companies to do this by raising awareness with people. So we need to ask, the consumers need to start asking for safer technology and it needs to be a mass ask just it's unacceptable that this is rolling out without the research uh, to to make things safer to make much more reduced levels certainly at a minimum but then to have safe options like wired laptops as the norm or switches where you can turn off antennas um, when you when you're not using them or, yeah. or or just to have them off so you can use wired which is what I'm using right now is a, a wired internet. It's very fast. It, my calls don't, my Zoom doesn't drop. And um, so important. What, what is going on in the schools? Do you know our, um, you know, in, in your community, are, is there wireless in all of the schools? Do they use wired? What, what are kids doing in, in classrooms? Uh, in, in particular, you know, in Brazil, you know where I live. Uh, you don't see; it's not common to see wireless infrastructure in, in you know, in classrooms. Uh, even we have like a wireless, inf you know, when I'm saying these wireless uh, devices like laptops, you'll see like uh, when I was studying my masters, I used to see only uh, desktops. Um, you know, uh, of course, the connectivity was like wired, mm, and you know, there, there, there wasn't like a, this wireless mindset back on that time during, you know, in the, in the classrooms. Um, but now I think 
things might have changed a little bit, you know, since, you know, the uh, one of, I think one of the, the things that is stimulating the adoption, unfortunately, of the wireless technology in classrooms is like uh, the, 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 the way they can move and they can expand, you know, internally uh, inside the facilities of the institutions. Um, but yeah, I think in Brazil, in general speaking, it's not common to see uh, 30 laptops or 30, you know, mobile cell phones, you know, in a classroom. It's very common in the United States. In fact, the federal government is supporting, uh, you know, entire districts getting wireless everywhere, upping the the uh, wireless access points, their industrial wireless access points to have even more. And it's always being upgraded. And every kid, it's you know, one child, one laptop. It's yeah. And but you know, thank God, you know, there is like uh, these. Um, City in California, I can remember, you know, its name is Escarato, is in the EHT site, uh, like a, who is like that is leading like a, this to disconnect, you know, wireless from schools. I think this is in California. Um, I don't remember, you know, exactly, you know, the name right now, but I found it on your, you know, on the website. And in, not only in California, I, I, I think I saw something similar in other state, you know, you know, in the US. Where like uh, there are some uh, counties, you know, how can I yes. say that? Like uh, minor cities, like uh, that are like uh, leading this initiative, like uh, to go wired in, in when applicable, you know. Yes, we're um, we are definitely spearheading that all over the United States. The New Hampshire Commission on Five G Health and Environmental Effects issued a report. Uh, recommending wired technology in school. And there are many private schools that are installing wired, uh, wired connections, especially when parents organize on that issue. And uh, it is really an issue that is coming to the forefront because what just happened in, in the United States was that the Oregon Department of Health was tasked to issue a report on the health effects of wireless, especially to school children. And a report was issued. However, the report was filled with incorrect information, half truths, half of the science, they, they, not even half, they, they, they didn't even talk about the animal studies and a major expose was just published in the Washington Spectator documenting this. Also the fact that scientists from around the uh, world actually wrote a letter to the governor of Oregon calling to retract this report. So one thing that it really showcases is that there hasn't been a review of the science and the impact to kids, not by the CDC, not by the FDA, not by the FCC as our lawsuit shows. And so uh, this report made it seem like wireless was safe, except it, it, was, it was shoddy, it was, um, a real sham. And so that just was released today. So I know a lot of people on the call, some of whom I talked to earlier today, are, um, you know, really uh, showcasing that. So this is a big, a big expose happening here in, in the United States. Uh, and I'm sure that companies are trying hard to bring wireless devices to all the schools in Brazil and in uh, South America and all over the world. <laughs> yeah. To sell governments. Yes, yeah, and something that I like you said is like is this, but somehow we are seeing some traction. You know, some you know there are some places that are getting traction. You know, on this awareness. You know, as you mentioned, you know there are some some spots. You know, like uh, I know that they are somehow isolated, but we are seeing something that we haven't seen before, and this yes. is this awareness that is slowly growing and getting, you know, traction. So yeah, in the, and one of the questions is like, uh, what, I, what I would like to do with this research and is, 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 is that to raise awareness, you know, to see, hey, have you, have you, have you seen like uh, all this wireless technology around you? Have you noticed, uh, have you stopped? You know, and to think, you know, okay, I'm being irradiated 24 by seven, you know, during, you know, 
all week, all month, you know, all year, you know, constantly. Mm -hmm. So this has to be, you know, something behind this to my body, you know. Well, you're making the the invisible visible with this work too. It's we we think it's very important to showcase because people don't even they don't even think about it. They just think it's magic. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like uh, I don't know if I this is like a, the adequate word, you know, expression to say. It's not because I don't feel pain. That doesn't mean that it's not a danger for my, you know, for me, for my health. But it is. And you know, the worst thing of this is like uh, is it slowly, you know, is this is this getting, you know, is getting, you know, in is entering in your body, you know, it's slowly. And mm -hmm. when you realize of the damage, it, it, it might be too late, you know. Right. Right. What else do you want to share with with people who are listening about why, you know, why this is is so important and what, what is your message? Message is like um, uh, pay attention to your surroundings. Uh, raise awareness, you know, a principle in mainly in, among children. Uh, they don't deserve to be exposed uh, to wireless technology where it's not uh, required. Please think on them, you know, think about, you know, uh, the damage they can get from this. Uh, disconnect, you know, wireless technology when possible. Go to wired is safer. Uh, and try to spread, you know, the, this knowledge, you know, this uh, the initiative that Environmental Health Trust is is trying to promote, you know, among you know the community, not only in the U.S. but also in the world. Wow! Thank you so much. No, well, thanks you. Thanks for having me, Mrs. Corato. It's been a pleasure. And if you have any last questions, you can put them in the chat. Um, someone asked where they can see the the research that you've done and i am going to um put a link to it you had a poster that you did for the bioelectromagnetic uh, uh -huh. conference and is there other resources where people can see the research that you've done because i'll share that poster yeah those are normally in the those well-known uh, sites like uh, the IEEE. Mm -hmm. um, we have like, um, I have partnered with other colleagues from the communications laboratory uh, in creating more, you know, papers, you know, mm -hmm. and around this, you know, the uh, radiation, you know, uh, effects on the health. But normally you can go to, in this case, to the BioM uh, 2015. Mm -hmm. See the the poster with Mrs. Deborah Davis, and also look for my last name Rossini in the I Triple E or Google Scholar. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Nothing. See you.